What's happening, YouTube? It's me and the big homie Larry, but Larry just popped out somehow, some way. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Blinked <laughs> out on me. It's like, whoa, whoa, what happened? Uh, but it's the Life Games Lamont Tyson live stream on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. And we are here to discuss some heavy topics. There's going to be some, some good topics, too, that we're going to discuss, but we're going to save the heaviest topic for last because it pulls at my heartstrings and I need to calm down before I really go in on some people, which I'm probably going to wind up doing anyway, involving that Texas shooting. Living legend. How you feeling tonight? This is the living legend, folks. His name is Larry. <laughs> oh, man, I'm all right. I'm good. Everything's good. There's been a lot of terribleness in the world, man. Just, you know, shootings you know people passing away just it's it's yeah you know we need some we need some we need some goodness in the world to pop up something fantastic to happen like some like they need to come out and announce they have a cure for cancer or aids or something you know uh, well larry if they did the probably the drug lobby would block it from being announced <laughs> so that they can string <laughs> that shit out for like 5 to 3 4 decades so i mean what, what we really need is for America to start better educating its people. Right. Because we're losing the battle on logic and reasoning to uneducated MFers that get their education from Rupert Murdoch, Fox News, and right-wing, dead-spin, far-right, apparatuses that's where they're getting their education on american america from and yeah. the the country is not going to be able to survive that and it almost got you wondering larry if we're going to get gun reform are we going to have to do what we did in order to free the slaves are we going to ha have another another war civil war <clears throat> in the united states in order to get these back road gun loving i love the gun more than i love the bible folks to bow to the will of what the people want. And overwhelmingly, Larry, the people want gun reform. Yeah. I mean, I, I am, um, I, I, I don't know if that's what it's going to take, but it's very challenging because there's so many, every time they have one of these shootings, I know you said you wanted to wait to talk about it later, so I won't go too deep, but I, I okay. feel like whenever they have one of these shootings, everyone starts talking about gun control, but the problem is these guys are always buying these guns legally. And so I don't know what we're going to do. Unless they start outlawing certain weapons, I don't know what more gun control is going to do. Oh, simple, Larry, simple. I, I, ha I have a solution for you. Gun, it's not going to solve gun violence in totality, but it can certainly help with mass shootings. And we'll get there on the very end. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in to watch us. We love you all, Samara, Cynthia, and y'all had to bear with me because it keeps blacking out. My homie Mara is in the building. Um, just everybody here that came here to see me and Larry, we're going to try to give you some entertainment before we give you the real deal information. Larry, I got four subjects. Pick a number, one, two, or three. Let's go with... Lucky number two. Oh. <laughs> well, Larry, unfortunately, we had some more violence, but it wasn't the kind of violence that involved mass shootings. Mm. We had an uh, ex-football player currently playing football in Canada get into a squabble with an American Airlines employee. Now, before Oh, I let you yeah, see I saw this video. Before I, I didn't know he was. Clip, I didn't know he was a former football player. He's a for, Well, he's a football player now in the Canadian okay. League, but he used to play okay. for the Denver Broncos. Let me just set this up like this: After 9/11, going through the airport just seems to already be on the ten in the first place, Larry. I mean, you get yeah. some of the people working in the airport that are courteous, but you get a whole lot of them who are there who are just a holes. Period. Yeah. I mean. They're not friendly. They're not trying to speak to you in a manner that you get people speaking to you at Chick-fil-A. They no. just seem like they just showing up to collect the check and go home. So yeah, they, they feel like it's their little thiefdom, I think. They they they're just 
they're they're sort of angry and bitter and they and they act like they can do whatever they want to do because in large part they can but it doesn't mean that they should right they definitely so, can't put hands on people you got it having said that here's the clip and then we'll let we'll react to it Well, Larry, what I'm trying to figure out is mm -mm. how is it that the American Airlines employee didn't get arrested too? Now, here's yeah. the thing about that video. they That wasn't the full thing. So you had to get reports from the people that saw it start. And they said basically both these men was loud talking to each other because the uh, football player was upset that they was charging him more money for the bag that he had. Mm. And they said that the airlines person started raising his voice and told him to shut the F up. And mm. then after that, pushing ensued. And then you saw what we seen just then. So Larry, talk to me. What are your thoughts on the airline brawl for it all? I mean, it's sort of ridiculous that that I that they arrested this guy. I mean, I looked at this video, and from what it's from what it looks like, and I and mind you, maybe this maybe there was something that happened before, but from what it looked like, the airline worker hit him first, and it was almost like this. I mean, this is a terrible thing about being black in this country. It's like this dude waited and and announced to everyone around him, "Y'all saw that, right? You saw that. Yeah. You wanted to make yeah. sure." Yep. That everybody saw that he was assaulted before he actually defended himself. And then when he defended himself, obviously he whooped dude's ass. And you shouldn't get arrested because you win a fight. I mean, that's not the way things should go. If someone punches you and you win a fight, you should not be the one that's going home in handcuffs. That should not be the way things work out. I mean, at the I'm very glad least, you got Larry, fired. Look, Larry, at the very least, if you're going to arrest, they both need to be arrested for assault. What, Absolutely. What the, what the Absolutely. Hell? And there's, and I mean, it's clear. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that this dude is not going to win a ginormous lawsuit against United Airlines. I mean, this dude, obviously, I mean, this dude came out from behind the counter from everything I've seen in this video. This guy didn't look like he was any sort of physical threat to anyone until this guy confronted him and started and started trying to jump bad with them. And I mean, the dude put hands on somebody. You don't put hands on someone. You don't know who you're putting hands on. You might be putting hands on the dude and find out like he's a professional athlete. <laughs> you know, you might put hands on somebody and find out the dude's like an MMA fighter. The next thing you know, you're pretzeled up in some sort of jujitsu, you know, stranglehold or submission or something. You just never know, you know? But like, what I like about this picture is, Look at the way little buddy, the airline worker, got that QAnon smile on his face like, bro, you want some of this? You about yeah. to get some of this. And dude, he gave his ass all the smoke he could handle. Hell, I thought that when he hit when he hit little airline worker and he was on that conveyor belt, I thought his ass was going to be sent to the airplane like a package. That, that would have been funny if dude was uh, out and just got conveyed away. <laughs> <laughs> but look at what else is shocking in this picture, Larry. While dude is trying to beat his chest because, you know, hey, you got a couple of licks in. I'm going to smile at you because I can handle you. The yeah. women behind him was like, man, the hell with this. I'm just trying to get on the plane. Yeah, they were trying to get gone. <laughs> they were like, oh, damn. 
Oh, oh damn. <laughs> Try to get gone. You know? The, the, but, the women behind him could give a hot baby's crack. What is going on with these two grown ass men? <laughs> I, I really hope that. I really hope that mm. this dude is is out. I hope that they have seen this video and all charges have been dropped against this dude already. But United right. Airlines is going to have to come out of pocket. I mean, this dude came out from behind the counter and struck a customer. This dude is going, he's suing. He's, I'm certain he's going to sue. I'm certain he's going to, matter of fact, I would not even be at the very, at the, I wouldn't even be at all surprised if, if United Airlines said, we're not taking this to court, bro. Just tell us what you want. We'll tell you what we're willing to give. We'll meet in the middle. Let's call it a day. You know you got this. I don't think you want to drag it out. I'm sure you would rather have your money because if we have to go to court, that means we have to drag it out for years and years. You're going to get a giant settlement. You're going to get a giant judgment against us. We're going to have to appeal it. And by the time you get paid, it might be five years later. And you're going to get the same amount of money anyways because your attorneys are going to take all half, you know, third or half of it. So just go ahead and take, you know, give us a number and, and then let's work this out. And I'm sure that's what's going to happen. So I would like to know, I would like to know, you know, all the details and I'm sure they'll come out because we've talked about this since George Floyd, Larry. It just seems that more and more people in this country are just so riled up that they're starting to uncoil. And you've yeah. seen all the stuff that's been happening on airplanes, in and around airports and what's going on. And so um, nobody should be fighting. These are public spaces. They need to be safe. And at the end of the day, if the guy had an issue with the ex-football player, why didn't he just call security? Why in the world are you yeah. up there trying to be fucking secure? Hell, you ain't Rambo. I mean, no. this look on your face just tells me you want to smoke. Hell, yeah, he, he thought he, he thought he was gonna do something. He probably looked at him and said, Oh, this is just some little skinny black dude with, with skinny jeans on, and I can handle him. And he probably felt all big and bad, and he got he got served up. You know, yep. He got them. I mean, he got he got them hands put on. What what my man uh the unk say on Snowfall? We're gonna have to squabble. We have to squabble. <laughs> you know, <laughs> damn. He he got squabbled. I like to had his ass on the airplane yeah. asleep in the cargo bin. Damn, ladies and gentlemen, it, make peace if yeah. you can. Make you know what's frustrating peace though. If you can. Yeah. There's so the, the, like you were mentioning about the climate in the country right now. I feel like there's this yeah. climate in the country that's just openly hostile in general. People are just hostile. But I feel like there's so many people that feel like they have been granted permission and it's OK to attack black people. And, oh, well, you know, and you we know, know. Gave them that permission, don't you? Absolutely. But the problem with that is, is as a black person, regardless of if you're you're a black man or any man, when someone attacks you. You defend yourself. You're not thinking in that moment. Well, maybe you are because this dude out there in that moment was like, you all saw that, right? I mean, he's thinking about his blackness in that moment and how this is all going to look. But a lot of people, when someone hits you, you're not thinking about I'm a black man. You're thinking about I'm a human being and this guy just assaulted my, my, my person. I need to defend myself. And when you mm -hmm. defend yourself more effectively than they actually assaulted you, I mean, you can end up locked up and that's not the case, but there's so many people who think it's okay and safe to attack black people because they know the law is going to be on their side, even when it shouldn't be. They can attack us. And when we fight back, they know that the police are going to come and they're going to take the black person, even when the black person was just defending themselves. And that's, and that's what makes this place, this country so much more dangerous for us because it's not just that the citizens are, are, are willing to attack us, but we we really have no real recourse because the police will come and take their sides even when they should. Yeah, the hypocritical states of America. That's all I can say. Hypocritical states. Larry, pick a number now. I've got one and three. Pick a number. All right, let's go with uh, let's go with three. Oh, okay. <laughs> he wants to go at number three. Larry, what show is this? Oh, look at that. That's Martin. Mar Martin Payne. <laughs> Larry, they are getting ready to have a reunion show with everybody you will see on the screen, minus, um, uh, minus Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. yeah. On BET Plus June 16th. This is what it reads. Shout out to the homie 
Monique Nicole, she wrote the story. The special, which reunites the cast of the iconic 90s sitcom, will debut on June 16th on the BET streaming service. According to BET+, Plus, the 90-minute reunion special brings back the original cast members, Martin, Tisha Campbell, Tashina Arnold, and Carl Payne to reminisce about the series and the impact it had on culture. Sadly, Thomas Michael Ford, who played Martin's best friend Tommy in the series, died in 2016 from a ruptured abdominal aneurysm at the age of 52. Reportedly, the special takes place on the iconic Martin living room set and is hosted by comedian Afion Crockett. Larry, mm -hmm. are you going to be watching that or not? It, it might be interesting. I don't know. It seems how they do. I mean, it's sad that Tommy's not going to be there. I don't know if, if, if Brumman's still alive. It'd be interesting to see if they bring him back. But it'll be interesting. He's a comedian. Brumman is? A, yeah, yeah, he's a comedian. He should be. Okay. I mean, he's actually decently funny. Okay. Yeah, I would like to see him back. He, I always enjoyed his character. But, you know, it'll be interesting because I, I, from my understanding, Tisha Campbell and, and Martin Lawrence, they hated each other. Like, through that whole show, they just did not like each other at all. And, and it, fell, it fell out, man, when she got with Dwayne Martin because by all accusations, and these are accusations, Martin Lawrence was getting a little too touchy-feely with her. Mm. She felt uncomfortable, right? Like so she was saying how one of her recounts, she was saying when they would have like kind of the makeout scenes, she would feel his woody and he would be kissing for real instead of fake kissing. And so <laughs> and so now that Tashina Arnold has divorced Dwayne Martin, I don't know if she decided to make a meal. No, no, no. Uh Tisha Campbell. Yeah, Tisha Campbell. Yeah. She she's divorced with Dwayne Martin. Um, I don't know if she's trying to make amends or what, but um, they coming through, Larry. Um, the thing for me, I like the show during the era because in the 90s when this show came out, I was like 12, 13. So it right. was funny. But as I got older and I look back on the show, I kind of feel like the comedy was kind of silly. It, it was slapstick for black people. You yeah, know, slapstick comedy for black people, but it was funny during the era. How do you feel about it? I mean, I liked the show. I watched the show. I didn't like all the aspects. I didn't like the whole uh, what was her name, Shanae character. I don't like those characters with black men dressing up in as as these over the top ridiculous caricatures of black women. I I find it disrespectful. I think it's some. I think it's some weird fetish that white people in Hollywood have because they seem to want to do that to all black actors. And, and uh, you know, luckily we've had some good ones in, of, of late that have refused to do it, but we've also had some bros that just fall to the same sort of, you know, coonery that they've done over the years. But I, so some of it, I liked a lot of the show. I didn't like all of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's like any show. It was good for a long time and we were happy to see representations of ourselves but then it started to get a little bit long in the tooth. And now when you look yeah. back at the show, that's one of those shows that hasn't really aged well for me. Like, no. Mm -mm. There are some shows mm -mm. when you look at them, you're like, okay, these are these situations and jokes and stuff are timeless. And then right. you look, there's some shows like that where you're like, nah, this is just doesn't age. This was a, this was a show for its time period, and now it needs to go into the archive. Yeah, man. And it's, it's hard for me to be this critical – of Martin, because I mean, I can watch it and still get a chuckle. Yeah, but it was but hard it's a for me nostalgic to be chuckle. Yeah, it's hard for me to get to be critical of the show because Martin, for a long time, was one of my top three favorite comedians. Because mm -hmm. on stand up, this dude is nuts. Yeah. But I had to be honest about the show, and it is slapstick humor for black people. When yeah. you, you know, after me being an adult and having gone through the experience of seeing other things going outside my own bubble, and I look back on the show, I was like, damn, this was slapstick. Mm -hmm. What was a classic show that every now and then I would, it'd be Martin versus this show, and a lot of times I picked Martin over this show, was A Different World, which is a timeless oh, yeah. classic. Yeah. You can pick that up right now, get great entertainment, great knowledge, great learning, great black culture from that show, and I am sad in my youth, I would pick Martin over a different world, but that's not to say I didn't like Martin. 
<laughs> yeah, different world is a different world is straight up awesome. It's a legit show. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I don't think anybody's gonna hate on that show. I mean, people can hate on Cosby for what the stuff that he's accused of doing, but mm -hmm. the Cosby show is fantastic. People forget, I think, sometimes that a different world was a spin-off of the Cosby show. And you know, it's fantastic when you look at that formula that was created with Cosby, you see. You know, Kenya Burr is following that same formula where he started the black, you know, uh, blackish and then he spun it off with grownish where he sends his daughter to college. I mean, literally, it's like he took the Cosby show formula and just and just used it. And I think that's fantastic. They done now the Cosby show, I think, is has people can say what they want, but that show has legs. It is still. Oh, yeah. It, it yeah. is still a very good show to this day. You can watch it. The the sort of the life lessons that you get with family, with all of the you know stuff that they deal with money and, and older people and education and sex mm -hmm. and, and drugs and and fashion and everything that goes along with 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 being a family. It's all there and it's still relevant. And not all of our black shows did not all of our black shows landed and, and lasted. Like I don't really care <laughs> if I ever see homeboys in outer space again. You know, I don't think, uh, I don't think Jamie Foxx's show with him, you know, I don't think that show, it, I don't think it has the legs that some of these other shows did. I mean, some people may still like it. I think that is another show that was funny for the time. And now it's sort of didn't really work. You know? Yeah. Well, Larry, you have some shows that you know they're okay, they're good, but they're not groundbreaking iconics that can go on and last forever like an evergreen tree in California. Right. Cosby and Different World, yeah. I don't think you're gonna ever find a show that's gonna replace a different world and what no. it meant to young black people who was yeah. getting a taste of what it would be like to go to college, be yeah. amongst your people in an HBCU, have to deal with you basically a kid transitioning to an adult and dealing with adult-based themes, and they was not afraid to cover racism. They was not afraid to cover men battering women. That show, to me, I don't know how I forget, Larry, but of all TV shows I've ever watched in my life, A Different World is definitely in the top five. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, it was great. It was, a, it was a fantastic show. I love that show. It was, it was, it was absolutely wonderful. And, yeah. uh, and I... I I'm glad that I'm glad that what's his name. So I, I didn't watch Grownish, but from my understanding, it's sort of in the same vein of that. I haven't really watched it. I've been meaning to watch it, but I, I don't want anybody to remake a different world right now. I, I'm glad that Kenya Burris decided to do his own take on it, but not be a different world. Like he created, I think Grownish is sort of like a different world for the millennial generation. And that's fantastic. I find sometimes people try and remake these classics and they just destroy them. <laughs> gotcha. I feel you. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are to number. What we see, number one. Um, We're on. Yeah. Was that number one? Yeah, number one. Thor: Love and Thunder comes out in July, and <laughs> I, I have refrained from watching the trailer until I had a chance to watch it here. I know who the villain is. I like this villain. This villain is going to be the type of villain you could actually get behind, especially my atheists out there. And I uh -oh. will explain it to you in just a second after we watch the trailer. Shout out to Mara. Shout out to Tressa C. Appreciate you guys tuning in, even though y'all watching the finale of uh, Grey's Anatomy and everything. We still happy you gave us a little bit of love. Here Wait, we Grey's go, finale is still on the air? Grey's Anatomy is <laughs> on the air, yes. yes <laughs> I yes, thought that yes. show, boy, that Run. show, it jumped the shark for me a long time ago. I was like, Man. I'm out. The checks they collecting on that show is unbelievable. I am not mad at them though. I, that show it must that show I think has been on for my entire marriage, and I think I've been married for like seventeen years. So that's got. I mean, wow. that Dang. show. I mean, those people. I mean, if they do nothing else in their life, all the checks they've collected, all those shows, all that's gone into syndication, those people are going to be paid forever. Yep. Here we go, people. Thor. Love and Thunder trailer, and I will break down the villain and other little surprises I found in this trailer. Here we go. Please do. Kids, get the popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the Space Viking, Thor Odinson. 
He was no ordinary man. He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. When he got in shape, he went from dad bod to god bod. And after all that, he reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? The old ex-girlfriend. What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months and six days. Give or take. Am I uh, sensing feelings? Well, you're right. The only ones who gods care about is themselves. So this is my vow. All gods will die. I just want to say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. She's my first bad guy. You never forget your first. You are not like the other gods that are killed. Because I've something worth fighting for. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise. And flick. Oh, you flick too hard, damn it! Shall we help him? Then eventually, grape. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell, y'all. Ah, oh, hell. I, let me just say this, Larry. I cannot wait till my daughter is old enough to come to the movies and understand what's going on. It's my road dog, man. <laughs> so, Larry, I got a lot of explaining I need to do with this Thor love and thunder and Gore the God Butcher, who is being played by former Batman. I was going to say, look at Batman. Yeah, Christian, Christian Bale. And in the comics, Larry, this man... Literally, is pale white like this, except for he's more of a bright white, you know, a bright like a star white. Mm -hmm. And he, he looks like he came planet. out of Apocalypto. Uh, well, that's kind of <laughs> where that's kind of how they want it to look mm -hmm. because he lives on a planet that is destitute. There's poverty. People are sick. People are dying. He loses his family and just a lot mm -hmm. of death. All and right. first of all, he finds out that there are gods. And he wants to know, well, why the hell did the gods not come help my people? Mm. And so he becomes the last person on his planet. No God came to help him at this, because at first they didn't even believe in gods. Then when they find out that there are gods, he's upset. Well, where was the God that's supposed to protect us from famine, defeat, and people coming to overthrow us? Mm. Does that does that not sound like what the natives to America might have said when they smelt Europeans coming? But anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so Larry, when he finds out about these gods, guess what he decides he's going to do? Kill them. He's going to kill them, but he needs power to kill them. <laughs> so you're familiar with Venom, aren't you? Yeah. The, do you know what created Venom? The symbiote? No. There's a deity called No that created Venom and all the symbionts. He created all of them. Huh. So he's more powerful than Venom and every other symbiont you've ever seen. So he also created a sword called the Necro Sword. And that's okay. what you're seeing Gore grabbing in this video. Now, mm. I don't think Marvel has the rights to the symbiont. So they're probably not going to do the backstory I'm giving you, but the sword is going to work similar because I've seen in the trailer, the sword has this ability that it does something. It's called the God Bomb. Okay. And it, it stabs the heart of wherever the gods live, and it sends some kind of a symbiont energy and destroys them. And so, because remember, he gets the sword from a deity that is the deity of the symbionts who also fought gods and killed them. Mm. No, that's the name of the deity. No. 
So right. he gives him this necro sword that gives him Larry. Check this out. He gets every power that the symbiont get, and he can fly. <laughs> and his ass can fly. Wow. And, and he's angry. Like a, and he's angry. But like I said, he's probably not going to have a symbiont. You can forget that because that's mm. not Marvel's property yet. But right. I saw the god bomb in this trailer, and he's going to kill a god. This is Zeus. And so in the comics, Larry, what happened was Thor started noticing that for some reason, all the gods start getting missing. They start hmm. disappearing. So he goes to investigate, and he runs into this Joker right here. Because this Joker had just killed a god when Thor shows up on the scene. Now, I ain't hmm. going to tell y'all what else happened. But just know this, Larry. Zeus is going to get his ass kicked and die. You know how I know? <laughs> tell me. Because Valkyrie gets his lightning bolt as she's Ooh. fighting Gore the God Butcher. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. And yeah, so, Valkyrie's no joke. I mean, when you're talking no about good. the bodyguard of the gods, so you know she's no joke. But that must also mean that she has God powers in her, Larry, because no human or no regular mortal can hold Zeus's lightning bolt. You have right. to have part God in you to hold that lightning bolt, and she's holding the lightning bolt. And so it, it just leads you to wonder. We also got a chance to see the Guardians are in this for a little while. Yeah. Now, I don't know how long they're going to be in this thing to help Thor, but Thor is going to need some help. The, no. But at the, end, at the end of the day, what we haven't seen in the comics is Thor using, um, using um, damn, what's the name of his hammer right now? Um, not Mjolnir. Um, damn um. it, I can't. Um, what is the name? Something of uh, Breaker or something. Uh, uh, Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker in, the, yeah. in, the, in the comics, he never had Stormbreaker to fight uh, Gore and the Necro Sword. And you know, Necro, necrotic means death, death by yeah. the way, just in case you people want to know. And um, so, yeah, man, this is going to be good. I've never been a big fan of Natalie Portman as Jane Foster, but you know, now that she's got Mjolnir and she's, she's going to help. God Thor, now? She has. <laughs> you, you look like you had to take a deep breath. <laughs> yes, la basically, in essence, she's a god, Larry. She is a oh, god. Oh, goodness essence. gracious! And and Thor's going to need her. You would think Thor should be able to defeat Gore, the God Butcher, um, without her. He can yeah. just use Stormbreaker because if you can separate um, Gore from the necro sword that's how you basically hurt him and kill him but right. the problem is in in the comics the sword actually attaches to him like the symbiont attaches to venom so it becomes that's... hard for you to separate it but now, is the sword more... sentient yeah is it alive in some sense yeah yeah it, it, it's supposed to be symbiont that's what it is it's hmm. a, it's its own form of symbiont okay. and this same this same sword larry was so powerful. Guess who was afraid of it in the comics? Um, Somebody who's badass. I mean, super bad. bad Thanos? Thanos? No, worse bad. than Thanos. Bad. Really? Yes. That's how powerful this sword is. I'm just trying to give y'all context. I might need to go read these. I might need to go read. Them. I have I have my, my, my Marvel Unlimited subscription back up so I can go read all this stuff. So... Mm -hmm. I might have to put down my Howard the Duck comics for a minute and go read some uh, some backstory on this. So, Larry, this sword was so powerful that even the great Galactus himself said he's never seen a weapon that can forge day into the light until he's seen the Necro Sword. Man, that's that's pretty woo, serious. I, that's that's a little bit too much power for one person. Hey, now let me ask well, you: Larry, is this, Does this movie is this supposed to happen before or after Guardians Three? Before, before, yeah. So then we know the Guardians are going to live. Then, yeah, yeah, Guardians living for sure. Okay, because the debate is wondering: Are they going to unveil Adam Warlock in this Thor, or are they going to wait to the Guardians movie? Hmm. I hope they just wait. I hope right. they wait. I we don't. We don't need Adam Warlock when you have a villain that is this menace. I mean, technically, Larry, this dude could beat Thanos. Wow. Technically. 
T technically, this dude is that badass. He could beat Thanos, Larry. And you see how in the background they've got like, it looks like live worms crawling yeah. around him. I guess that's Marvel hinting at the symbiont because mm. the throne that Noel, the person that created the symbiont, he sat on a throne that looked like moving worms the way Gore the God Butcher is standing in the center of this picture. Mm. That dude, man, he he looks something else. Uh, he looks bro. like he, he looks like he's dead. It looks like he's got like black tar coming out of his mouth. Larry, he looks like an anorexic mummy that got out the tomb. That's what he looks like. <laughs> Just like it. You know anorexic he's gonna be great because Christian Bale, boy, he loves playing those sort of dark characters and he is great at it mm -hmm. he's gonna be good at it so ladies and gentlemen post your comments let us know are you going to be watching this movie because it is going to be good and now ladies and gentlemen if you're queasy if you don't like to talk about politics i now Bye. bid you goodbye because <laughs> the last few minutes of this show is going to be spent going ham on the party that's trying to obstruct people over a fake ass freedom, a fake ass constitutional right, and their selfishness in thinking that their rights supersedes the safety and security of the nation as a whole. And ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I am sadly talking about what happened in Texas. And Larry, this cuts personal for me because of this right here. I have yeah. one of these now. That that y'all see right there, is 100% Lamont and Crystal DNA. That's what y'all looking at. And every time I have to think about these families and these mass shootings, I get bothered because I was bothered before I had L. And yeah. I was always like, damn, we can put a man on the moon, but we can't figure out how to nip mass shootings in the bud when every other country has figured it out. Yeah. And I'll show you an example of that um, during this segment. But for now, let me give you context. Larry. Let's take a look at the video of what's been going on since the shooting happened, what's new, and then we'll react to some of the dumbass conservative tweets that they've been putting out to deflect from what needs to happen. Here we go. The first emergency calls coming Tuesday morning, and they were horrific an active shooter at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, just west of San Antonio. The gunman made entry into the school and complete disregard for human life, just an evil person, started shooting kids, anybody that was in his way, teachers, had no regard for human life. Authorities say 21 people killed, including 19 young students, little boys and girls, along with two of their teachers. More than a dozen others transported to nearby hospitals. Police say the gunman, 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, unleashed his attack wearing some type of body armor and carrying a long gun. The first responding officers, including Border Patrol agents, were unable to stop him. Officials say they put themselves between the kids and the shooter to draw his fire away from them. Two of the officers struck and injured by the gunman's bullets. When SWAT teams arrived at the school, a second firefight ensued. The suspect ultimately killed. Authorities say shortly before the attack, Ramos shot his grandmother at her home. She's now in critical condition. He then traveled to Robb Elementary, wrecking his truck in a nearby ditch. Minutes later, authorities say Ramos entered the school, unleashing his rampage on helpless victims. Texas Governor Greg Abbott calling the tragedy a senseless crime. In just two days, he was scheduled to join Senator Ted Cruz and former President Donald Trump at the National Rifle Association's annual conference in Houston. And a community dealing with the unthinkable. Their children and loved ones are gone. And this may be the most painful image. Instead of school buses driving away, a fleet of hearses. Another school day in America ending in tragedy. Many across the country say they are sick and tired of just prayers. They need real change. Sandy Hook, Parkland, and now Uvalde. Oh, boy. L ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to talk direct. The Republican Party is holding up anything that can help these problems. Now, I didn't say solve. I said help. And 
where are we going? We just had a mass shooting last week in Buffalo, New York. No, we had two mass shootings because we had one in Buffalo and another one in Orange County in a church. In the church. The first thing my wife said to me when she heard this news, she was like, Lamont, there was a mass shooting at a school and they shot the assailant. And then we both immediately looked at each other and said, he definitely wasn't white, yeah. which is pretty sad, which, yeah. which is pretty sad. And lo and behold, we look up and damn, we write, he ain't white. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't, you might not be able to stop all killings, but you can reduce the amount of carnage that happens. And the NRA and the Republican Party don't even want to talk about that. They want to attack you because you want to have a solution that can help protect your family potentially in the future. What my suggestion is, is I'm not saying take away the assault rifles. I'm saying make it illegal, punishable by arresting your ass on the spot. If you get caught wearing military style protection and having an assault rifle or military rifle with high power magazines in public. If you want to own that stuff, own it at home. That's fine. Own it at home. We're supposed to be a civilized nation with civility. And you don't need that shit nowhere public. Nowhere. If you want to have yourself a cosplay from Call of Duty, have it at your boy house. But on public grounds, nobody wants to see that. And that should be an immediate warning to the police and anybody that see their ass running around in the middle of the street with a fucking AK anything. Immediately yeah. call the police. You should be hauled into jail. They should treat you the same way they have treated people who get caught with a damn dime bag of weed. Which one is more dangerous? Okay. Yeah. And having said that, I'm going to pass the floor to the living legend. And after he speaks, I'm going to show the living legend some of the dumb ass retorts from the Republicans and their acolytes about this whole thing that just make me and more and more people enraged because you would rather call us selfish than to think about what is needed for the greater good of the country. You always talk about we need to sacrifice. You always talk about put on your bootstraps. That's what you Republicans love to tell people. You love to project the shit you keep inside on other people and don't listen to what you tell people. It's time for you to put your bootstraps on, sacrifice if you claim you love this country so much, keep your fucking guns at home. I didn't say take them. I didn't say take them. I said, keep them at home. There's no reason for you to have them in public. Floor is yours for a few minutes, Larry. Yeah, I'll tell you the thing that there, there's a few things that got me with this whole thing. One, the as soon as I heard the dude got shot, it was just sort of a sad commentary on this country. The first thing I said was, oh, he was a person of color, you know, yep. because mm -hmm. if he was white, he would have been walked out of there. They would have they would have had him in handcuffs. They probably would have put a bulletproof vest on him to make sure no one shot him on the way out. And they would have yep. walked him, put him in a car. They would have drove him to, to Burger King or something on the way to jail to make sure that he was fed and, 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 and taken care of before he got locked up and fingerprinted. Mm. But mm -hmm. they killed him. But the, the, the thing that really got me is, is that those cops left that left that dude in there for an hour, an hour. There were parents outside getting pepper sprayed, tased, and arrested mm -hmm. because right. they were going off saying, get in there. What are you doing? Get in there. Save our kids. They would not go in there and save those little kids. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm being a conspiracy theorist or, or everything is racist, but I just have to say, if they were little white babies, I'm not sure that they would have waited an hour to go in there, but there was a bunch of little brown babies in there and they left this dude in there for an hour. And they have said time and time again, these, all these studies, when they do these post, you know, these post incident breakdowns, they say, if you go in and you engage the shooter, it's not going to cause further death to this, to the students or the people there. It's going to force that shooter to engage with the officers, which takes him off of the, off of the civilians. It means he can't sit there, shoot all the civilians because he's engaging with the officers. Now, does it put the officers at greater risk? Absolutely. But guess what? That's your fucking job. 
That's what you're supposed to do. We don't pay you. I hear I have I have friends that are cops. I have family that are cops. People that are always saying my job is to get home safe at night. No, that is not your job. Your job is to make sure that I get home safe at night. That's your job. Your job is to make sure I get home safe and that little kid next to me gets home safe and the old lady down the street that everybody gets home safe. If you get home safe, that's a bonus. That's a that's a bonus for you. But you're supposed to make sure everybody gets home safe first. And these dudes are sitting out there for over an hour watching parents just plead and beg. And then when they try and go into the school because they're just like, F it, I'm going to get my kid. I would rather die trying to get my kid than sit out here and have my kid find out later my kid's getting slaughtered while I'm sitting out watching. And instead, they start pepper spraying the people. They start tasing them and arresting them when they try and go and save their own children. Mm. I, I mean, this place, this country has gotten to be just, it's like upside down world. It's so effed up at times. It doesn't make any sense. And, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. I know you're not saying they should take their guns away. I'm saying we should have an assault weapons ban. We don't need we don't need weapons of war like that. Now, if you want to have if you want to have actual states, you know, state regulated and 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 registered militias and that's who's going to and those people are going to be the ones that are owning assault rifles. Go ahead, because when people look at the Second Amendment and they start talking about gun rights, the whole point of having guns was to be able to have a well armed militia and so that you can protect yourself against a tyrannical government. Well, Johnny Joe over there with his with his cowboy hat and his giant ass belt buckle is not a militia. He's an individual. This 18-year-old kid who was able to order, and I don't know where an 18-year-old kid got the money to buy these guns because I posted the links where the kid bought the guns from. I went and looked them up. The damn guns were like $2,200, $2,500. He had two of them. Mm. I don't mm. know where he even get the money to buy that crap. But He stole it from his grandma probably because he maybe. shot her in the face. But my point is is that an 18-year-old kid buying an assault rifle, This is not a, that, that kid's not a militia. He's a kid. And so if you want to have a well-regulated and, and, and registered militia, okay, do that. Do that. But it should not be that any Tom, Dick, and Harry can sit up there and buy weapons of war and roam around our city streets inflicting all kinds of damage on whoever it is that they decide they want to inflict that damage on. Because we can sit up there and say we're going to send the SWAT team out to shoot them, but by that time it's too late. They've done the damage. Mm -hmm. It's too late. You got that right. Now, Larry, America loves to call themselves an exceptional nation. <laughs> exceptional the world, what? The world power, the world leader. We love to say that stuff about ourselves. Yeah. But every other country, when they've had any mass shootings, Larry, within weeks, they've got legislation passed to ban those assault-style weapons and have not had mass shootings. Take a listen to the Prime Minister of New Zealand and what they did. But, you know, when I watch from afar and see events such as those today, I think of them not as a politician, I see them just as a mother, and I'm so sorry for what has happened here. And then I think about what, what happened to us, and all I can reflect is we are, we are a very pragmatic people. When we saw something like that happen, Everyone said never again. And so then it was incumbent on us as politicians to respond to that. Now we have legitimate needs for guns in our country for things like pest control and to protect our biodiversity, but you don't need a military style semi-automatic weapon to do that. And so we got rid of it. We had a buyback scheme, you know, people had legitimately and legally gone out and purchased these weapons and we had changed the laws. So in fairness, we said, well, we will buy them back and then we will destroy them. And so that is that is what we did. <laughs> I want to like her accent, but it reminds me of Sarah Palin trying to talk sexy, so it's hard for me to say I can get with that accent. <laughs> but I like what she said, Larry. Yeah. She's absolutely right. Nobody needs to be running around in public with a weapon of war, Larry. And I saw the statistics. America leads the world by far in mass shootings. Right. By far. And I want you to take a look at what the NRA had to say, Larry. Take a look at this shit. This is the NRA. Statement from the NRA. 
Now, Larry, it's going to be hard for me to get through this hogwash, but All I'm going right. to go through it. Our deepest sympathies are with families and victims involved in this horrific and evil crime. On behalf of our members, we salute the courage of school officials, first responders, and others who offered their support and services. Although an investigation is underway and facts are still emerging, we recognize this was the act of a lone, deranged criminal. As we gather in Houston, they're having an NRA summit in Houston, I think, tomorrow. Yeah. We will reflect on these events, pray for the victims, recognize our patriotic members, and pledge to redouble our commitment to making schools secure. What the hell does that mean, Larry? What, what the hell is that hogwash? What the hell is that mumbo jumbo, hocus pocus, alamigoshes of nothing? You know, of nothing. Yeah. I have an English teacher that used to tell me, Lamont, when you write a paragraph, don't make it a word sandwich that sounds good that means nothing. Larry, this shit right here was a word sandwich that doesn't even sound good. You ain't say, first of all, out of respect, you should be saying, you know what? We counsel in this convention. The hell with that. But we know you're not going to do that because your ass is making too, many, too much money. Right. Secondly, you should be saying, you know what? We can still be a viable company in the marketplace by not selling high power rifles and magazines to lay citizens. We'll keep them for the military and the police. But you're not going to do that either. And I'm going to tell you why, Larry. I just hate to, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I got to say this. Because as much as they project black people need and, and minorities and all people need to learn how to save their money, don't spend on frivolous shit. Larry, would you believe 80% of the guns in America are owned by 20% of the population and yeah. half of that population is dead, broke, poor, trailer fucking trash. Spending yeah. their whole damn children's <clears throat> Christmas money on being in line at Academy Sports buying a damn gun on New Year's Eve. I mean, Chris, on Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah. That's why they won't get rid of this scam, Larry. That's why they won't get rid of this scam. Nobody needs that. And I'm going to give you a chance to reply to this bull job, Larry. Then I got some more for you. I'll tell you, I, I'm looking at this. And, you know, when I was in uh, when I was in 11th grade, I think it was 11th grade, we, read, we, were, we were doing a segment in our English class on, on George Orwell and uh, and Orwellian speech and double talk and all that stuff. And one of our assignments was to write a was to write like a political speech or a statement that basically said nothing. And <laughs> and, and, and and it reminds me of this. It reminds yeah. me of this. It is basically saying absolutely nothing. And, nothing. and I was. I will say this. I am so sick of hearing people get up there and offer their their thoughts and prayers. Oh, my Lord. I don't care about your thoughts and prayers. I don't want any more of your thoughts and prayers. If you no. want to do something, no. do something. If you're going to, I mean, Joe Biden, if you want to do something, if the if Congress won't do it, then how about this? How about you sign an executive order? And you let the Republicans in the Senate and everybody else, all the gun rights lobby, you let them fight it out in court. You you sign that executive order and then let them fight it. Let them fight it. It's harder to get something. It's easier. It's easier to do something and and ask for forgiveness than it is to have to ask for permission. So don't ask for permission. Just do it and then let them fight it out. And if they and who knows, maybe maybe that the baby goes to court and the courts say, hey. This part gets struck down, but these other parts can stay. And then maybe we get some legis maybe we get some some gun control in there. That's not to say that it won't be overturned later, you know, right. but do something. So, Anything. ladies and gentlemen, elections have consequences. And and the the, the consequence of Republican gerrymandering, the consequence of us having an antiquated voting system first and foremost there should not be a situation when we've got the congress that is spread out evenly amongst the population of the united states but the senate ain't we should not still be running around with that damn electoral college shit 
because we've seen three times where the popular vote was defeated by the electoral college to the president that didn't get the popular vote right. and got in there on some bull job. Right. And so because of that, the majority is being pushed to the back and being a minority. And they just did a statistic, Larry, that polled Republicans, independents, and moderates. I mean, Democrats, excuse me. 80% of Democrats support gun legislation. 55% 55% of the moderates support gun legislation. And believe it or not, Larry, 40% of the Republicans also support it too. Yeah. 40%. So go ahead. Larry. I, I, I am I am there's a couple of things. One, I'm mildly hopeful mm-hmm. that and it, even though it hasn't officially happened yet, I think it will. Right. Because they're owed, because they're it looks like the Supreme Court is going to uh overturn Roe v. Wade, right? There are a lot of single issue voters in the Republican camp that have been Republican only because of that issue. And now that that is going to be overturned, I am hopeful that there will be some Republicans that flip and say, I am no longer a Republican, I'm no longer feeling obligated to vote Republican, I can now vote as a Democrat. You know, and hopefully that some of these some of these things can then maybe we can flip some of these districts and some of the and and maybe grab another Senate seat or two. Hopefully some of that happens. But on the other hand, yeah, if it doesn't, I think we just have to realize I think that I think one, the Democrats need to change their language. They need to stop being candy asses and talking around the, the, the Republicans and just get out there on TV and start saying Republicans want to see children dead. The Republicans want to see your children dead in their schools. And how do we know? Because they refuse to protect them. Not only do they refuse to protect them, they are actively making it easier for people to go into these schools with fully with fully militarized weapons and kill them. They're making it easier to carry them. They're making it easier to buy ammo. They're making it easier to buy extended clips. They're making it easier in every way. And that's why the Republicans want your children dead, because as we see, they're making it easier. So why? I mean, I don't know why. Maybe they're just sick and twisted. But the Democrats need to get out there and they need to have language that is so direct that they have to put they have to put the Republicans on their heels and make the Republicans have to say, wait a minute, that's not us. Yes, it is. And you can't prove it. You can't prove me otherwise until you do something about it. They have to keep on hammering them and hammering them and hammering them until they finally say, we have to do something, people. We cannot just sit up here and have the whole country believe we hate kids. and We want them dead. And then maybe they'll do something. Maybe they'll do something. Beto O'Rourke actually poked this chest out and got in the face of Governor Abbott at the press conference. And that's exactly what we need from some people. Because right now, like you said, Larry, great argument. It feels as though the Republican Party just wants young children to be target practice. And let me explain what I'm saying. They are getting ready to repeal Roe versus Wade. No abortions. Okay, so you want to protect these unborn children. Unborn children, just so when they get into life and living in America and actually being a living human being, what? You're going to treat them like shit? Yeah. So that's that's why you're getting rid of the abortion because we need some more target. What 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 is it? I mean, I mean that's the crazy need... thing. But they 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 throw they use all of they they try and wrap themselves in religion with all of this. They try and make oh it seem God. as if uh, the abortion issue is a religious issue, and and they want to and they want to uh they, some for whatever reason they want to protect these children who are who are. Or, you know, or, or human beings, they're not alive yet. Even in the Bible, it refers to when they talk about being born again, they say, well, how did you enter the womb again and then and then be reborn? And they said, no, they're ref- I mean, even in that sense, you can take it and say that there can st- that God is not considering you actually alive until you have been born, until you right. have left the womb. Exactly. Until then, you are not alive. And. And so the re- the idea that this is all some sort of this is all some sort of religious based thing that needs to be protected through from Chris, you know through Christianity is hogwash 
And these people just, they sit up there and they want to act like they want to protect all these kids. And then they want to, at the same time, they want to allow people to run up in places and kill their kids. And it's just, these, these people are so twisted and demented and sick. And I, I just don't, I just don't understand how we got here in this place. I don't understand how, how our, our, I don't even want to say our, I don't want to, I don't understand how the, the, the so-called conservative, you know, religious infrastructure in this country has gotten to this place. It's like they've been so perverted, you know, with Larry, all of their. I've, I've explained it to you over and over again. I mean, you chastised me one time and now you're starting to see the light. It's <sighs> because the people at the people at the top of these organizations and churches and politics, they don't believe in God and all that shit, really. But they know that they're dumb idiots do. And they're able to use and placate the Bible, its teachings, and all that to sway these little puppets' brains. That's yeah. what they're doing, Larry. That's what they're doing. These people, if they look at it like this, if we can get these people to believe in this fairy tale of God and just pray and use that as a straw man argument, God knows what we can get them to believe from us if we say it comes from God. I mean, right. look at all the people who've killed themselves committed themselves to cults, Jim Jones, David Koresh, all these MFers that say they are of God when they're not. They don't even believe in the God. They're just using it to get what they want from human beings. That's right. what the Republican Party is doing. Not to mention, they know that these people that have all this godliness in their party are dumb as a sack of bricks in the bottom of the ocean. They couldn't, they couldn't soak up knowledge if you put it into a full pail of water. They couldn't do it. And, and who's going to take care of all these kids? Who's going to take care of all these all these kids that, that people can't, they don't want because they can't afford them? And they, I mean, what are you going to do? Who's going to take care of them? I mean, they're, they're going to turn around and sit up there and complain about, about, about welfare queens and everything else. They're going to try and sit up there and complain that all these poor people are just want, they're just want a handout. They just want money. No, they, they're going to tell them, I, I, I didn't want to have this thing, kid. But I can't. But you wouldn't let me have an abortion, and so now I have this other child. You you're gonna have to pay for it because this kid needs to eat. You know what are they gonna do? No. What are they gonna do? If people just start giving the kids away. Just turn. What are they gonna do? They're just gonna start dropping them off at, at you know, putting them in mangers and dropping them off at, at fire stations. What are they gonna do when you all of a sudden you have hundreds of thousands of of, of babies just being left because people are walking away from the hospital saying I can't take care of it. I couldn't abort it. I can't take care of it. I don't want it. Then what? Who's going to take care of them? Who knows, I mean, Larry? I, I don't know, man. No, I mean, the birth rate you. is down in this country as it is because people can't afford kids. I mean, it used to be people were having four and five and six kids. Now, people are having one, maybe two kids because they can't afford to have any other any more kids. And even if you do, you better hope you can breastfeed because you can't find any damn formula. You know? I mean, I mean, when we had L... We actually talked about, do we need to be bringing, and, and it's sad, Larry, we talked about, do we need to be bringing a black baby into this country with everything we know now as 40 plus year old adults? Right. You know, like, like, do we really, do we really, and at the end of the day, we was like, yeah, because hopefully L can receive and accept and grow on the knowledge and tutelage, discipline, all the things we can give her that she can reach a greater amount of human beings the right way to do the right things. You know, that right. hope is what brought us to L. But Larry, people are out here making straw man arguments. And ladies and gentlemen, what do I mean when I say straw man? They're making arguments against using tactics of things that you're not supposed to argue against. And take a look at this shit, Larry. Now, this is someone that I had tremendous respect for. She posted her daughter and I get sick of hearing this every time we have a mass shooting. Look at, look at this, Larry. My kid speaking truth. RIP, sweet people. My prayers go out to all the people and families affected by the shooting in Udelvi. But for those of you who not even a day later have tried to turn this into a political left versus right war, yet again, you need to stop. This was a horrific massacre of young children and their teachers, and you're trying to further your political belief by using their deaths. How can you be so insensitive, vile, and selfish to make so many people losing their lives about you? 
Now, see, Larry, that's the that's the bullshit I can't take. That's that's the exact bullshit I can't take. You're trying to make a straw man argument by using your kid to put up this fucking post when obviously you as a parent are not educating this child properly. Right. Policies are involved in everything. Stop trying to make your child not understand that politics drives everything. The reason me and Larry get to sit here as two free black men is because of policy. If policies right. was in place to have apprehended that damn boy with them weapons and that semi-automatic weapon before he got to that school, this would not have happened. So I don't want to hear none of that bullshit. I get tired of hearing that every time this happens. We right. are supposed to be a nation who's reasonable, logic, and educated. And when you have a barrier, you figure out how to overcome the fucking barrier. Not do this shit right here that lets me know, number one, you vote Republican. And number two, you just want to kick the can down the road to the dust settles and we forget about it. That's all you're doing with this damn post. That's all right. you're doing. You wouldn't put this shit up there. And last point, Larry, then we'll get out of here. I, I This motherfucker right here. Right. Blaming rap music and video games, trying to create another <laughs> straw man so that they can take the heat off the NRA who greases their palms to the tune of millions of dollars. I put a post yeah. up, Larry, that says, if the people really and truly want power back, we need to defame not only the government, but we need to defame the politicians and get lobby money out of politics altogether. Yeah. It, it, any initiative that comes up needs to be an initiative that comes from people voting on it. And I'll take the shit even further, Larry. We need to stop having it where politicians do all the voting on budget initiatives. The same way that they be having when you go to vote in your local district, we're going to either increase or decrease sale tax for the use of school bonds or whatever. I say America needs to get out and vote on every budget initiative. And that way you get rid of half the politicians. You only need people to be there to be the czars of what the people want Floor is yours, Larry. Then we'll get out of here. Yeah, I, I want to say, I want to say, there's a couple. I've I've been looking at some of the comments in the comment section. I want to say that some people have some really just uninformed, you know, opinions about abortion and women's rights, women's reproductive rights. First of all, the majority of abortions that happen in this country are from married women. So a lot of people think, oh, it's just a bunch of people out there having unprotected sex, and now they're paying the consequences. No. They're not. The vast majority of people that are having abortions are married people who can't afford to have more kids or maybe they're in an abusive relationship and they're trying to get out. They don't want to bring any more kids into that situation. Right. Maybe they have health issues. You know, if you're a 45 year old woman and you turn up pregnant, that's a geriatric pregnancy. It's extraordinarily dangerous to the mother and the child. Not everybody wants to go through that, you know. Now, as far as far as some of the other stuff, no one is really it seems like people aren't talking about some of the other issues that surround these things, like mental health issues that people are having, all this income inequality that causes these young people to feel that they are completely and utterly hopeless and they have nothing to look forward to today or ever in the future. And so they don't feel like there's any reason why they shouldn't do these things. They don't care if they die because they don't see any future, any possibility of any good in their life in the future. And that's because there's so much income inequality. It's utterly ridiculous. And we have this idea that we're supposed to have the American dream and that you can, if you work hard and you do the right things, that you can succeed in this country. But there's so many people that have followed that play, that plan, and it hasn't worked out for them. And people or young people see that and they recognize it and they realize that that is just a bunch of bullish, that it's not it true. And, it, they, it and, is. It is. and people feel people feel completely lost and hopeless and helpless. And as a consequence, what happens is sometimes feel people come out and feel like I want to take some of my power back and they do it in the most completely asinine and destructive way, which is to kill people. And, mm -hmm. and you have, it's just like that whole thing with the guy and, and, and 
Buffalo with all of his stuff, his, his stuff about replacement theory and people t- saying, oh, tell, people convincing Jeez. him that he's being Whoa. replaced. I mean, it depends on what you mean. If he, I mean, the, people are making it seem as if like they're not going to be there anymore. Well, yes. If you think about, I mean, I don't know what they mean by replacement theory exactly because there's so many different people that have different ideas of what it is. But yes, you are being replaced in some respects because the demographics of this country are changing. It is constantly changing. It has been changing from the time that the country started until today. It's it's ever evolving. It's going to continue to change. The country is getting browner. The country right now is getting a little bit younger. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. If you don't like it, people, there's a lot more people in mixed marriages. So you're having kids. I mean, yes, there are people that are there. There there are people if you want to consider being replaced by the fact that your brother may marry a white woman and now you have mixed children in your family or your sister may marry an Asian guy. And now you have mixed children in your family. If you view that as being replaced. okay. But the whole idea that there's not going to be white people in this world anymore it's utterly ridiculous. And, and, and that whole theory is dangerous. And, and if we continue to allow it to, to, to go out there and to fester, and, and, and the sad part is we have so much of this, not just out there running around on the internet, but we have so much of this in our police departments, in our military, in our schools, you know, all these people out there running around talking about, you can't, I just literally, I was tonight, I was driving to Panda Express to go buy some food for dinner. And and past the elementary school where people are out there protesting CRT. And, and I'm like, why? Why, why are so, people so determined not to have this, co- true con- this country's true history taught? And that's part of the problem. You have so many people that just don't. They're ignorant. They're ignorant on so many levels, and they're hopeless, and they're helpless. And then they just go and, and, and have a mental breakdown and just blow up. And, and we're not, and we continue to let it happen. We don't really care. All we do is just say that was so terrible. Hearts and you know, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Oh, it's so terrible. We have to do something. And then, and then they go on. And then the next week, they start talking about something else. They move on to something else. There's some new bombing in, of a hospital in, a, in Ukraine, or or some celebrity dies, or or. Or something else happens that that shifts the news, uh, that shifts and, and causes a new news cycle to happen. It's just it's we move on quickly, and no one really cares. No one's doing anything about it. So, this, Larry, it, it should this should be easy. I mean, it's to me, it just should be easy for them to do this. Like all I'm all I'm asking for, which is the most sensible legislation, just not ban these you your theory is ban them okay and i'm i'm i can support that but my theory is just simple as this since we're supposed to compromise and hell we shouldn't be compromising people's safety but if we're going to compromise all i'm saying larry assault weapons high power weapons high power magazines all that shit let them keep it at home you just can't bring it in public the minute your ass step on a public road and someone sees you with that and the police roll up and get you, your ass should be going to jail, punished hardcore. That's all I'm saying. I, I hear you. The problem with that is, the okay. problem with that is, is that you that you allow those guns to be bought. You allow the ammunition to be bought and to be owned. And and somebody buys it. Maybe the cops find out this guy bought some guns and they show up at the house. Hey, we heard you bought some guns. I did. Yeah. So what? They're on private property. I'm not doing anything with them. Leave me alone. And the cops right. just say, we can't do anything. It's on private property. But now the person goes and decides to shoot up a school. It's too late. It's too late. The, the guns have already been transported from private property to public property. The shooting and the killings already happened. So, I mean, yeah, maybe you can arrest him. Maybe like the kid, like the the, the, the white dude in, in Buffalo, maybe you can arrest him. But he, so what? He goes to jail and the white supremacists in jail think he's some sort of hero now because he went out there and killed a bunch of black folks. Or this other kid... That's in, uh, you know, that's in Texas. He go, he's out there. He gets shot and killed because, well, he's not white, so he doesn't get the right to to to, uh, to do process. So he gets shot and killed, and it doesn't matter that it doesn't matter that he bought the guns legally. The damage has been done. So I mean, if you wanna, if we really wanna make that change, ban assault rifles. Just ban them. Okay. Just get rid of them. I mean, the last time we had an assault rifles ban was after was after Reagan got shot, and he wasn't even shot with an assault rifle. I mean, <laughs> which is now, kind of the craziness. Now, Larry, before we go, let me show you this statistic. 
for all those who are running around here saying all the killing is going on in liberal places, blah, 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 blah. Take a look at these statistics, Larry. It's yeah. got death rate, total deaths, and if that state does or does not have a permit. Do you see what is the highest death rate for shootings in the United States as of 2022, Larry? Yeah, Alaska. The, the top five places on this list are all Republican bastions. And out of this top five, out of the top 10, only three of them make you have a permit to have any weapon. Yeah. Come on, man. I mean, for real. Let me put that back up there. Let that sink in. Alaska, Alabama, Montana, Louisiana, Missouri, Mississippi, Arkansas, West Virginia, and New Mexico is Democratic, but you got all them fucking backwoods hang off a mountainside with your teeth. States. Number one in deaths from shootings, and you got the nerve to keep talking about, well, it's all the Democratic places that it, all the shooting has to shut the fuck up, man. The reason you don't know better is because you don't look for statistics. Because I'm starting to think that y'all really are what folks um, stereotype West Virginians as. Dumb country hillbillies. That's what I'm starting to think. Here's the statistics right here in your face. Here it yeah. is. It's right here for you to look at. I'll tell right you, here. I don't, I don't really care if the if I don't really care if the if the killings and the shootings happen in Democratic or Republican areas, what they are happening in are American areas. They're happening right. in America. It exactly. doesn't matter if they're happening in Democratic districts or Republican districts. They're happening happening in America. And as Americans, we need to do something about it. That's part of the problem, I think, with this country right now is we are no longer looking at each other as Americans. We're looking at each other first and foremost as Democrats and Republicans. And we need to get back to a place where we see ourselves as one people first. And it's not going to happen, Larry. It's not going to happen. The only thing that's going to make that happen, the, what would make that kind of change happen is if law, order, and politics leveled the playing field to be fair for everybody when it comes to policing, the judicial system, and enforcement. If yeah. people saw that we can count on knowing that everybody is going to be treated fairly, regardless of skin color, regardless of stereotyping, and that you're going to get the same treatment once you, if you get into trouble with the police, people could get behind that. Whether they agree with it or not, they could get behind that. But the problem is they're not. And we're never going to have it that way, Larry. And half of it is on the politicians. They want us to stay divided because, like Trump said, this chaos theory, the more we keep them squabbling amongst each other, the more we get to sit over here raking all this cash being corrupt and they not paying attention to it. So yeah. that's, they, they, it's just, that's why I said, Larry, another solution would be what I said. You defang them and you defang lobbyists by taking the money out of politics letting the American people have a popular vote on budget initiatives, you defang all that shit. I'm down, defang with, I'm, I'm down with just pulling money out of politics altogether and just having all elections, just have it publicly financed. That's just the way it should be. Just make all yep. elections publicly financed. It's like There's a lot of countries that do it and just mm -hmm. say, you're going to get a certain amount of money from a public election fund, and that's what you have to work with. You have... You know, maybe whatever it costs. I mean, we're looking at now when these when when people are running for for president, you're looking at billion dollar elections on both sides. I mean, you're looking at between two people running, spending a billion dollars each to get a job that pays three hundred something thousand dollars a year. You know, <laughs> right, but, right. I mean, right. it's it's crazy. But if we get all that money out it makes it a lot easier to have honest politicians because you don't, you no longer have people that are beholden to organizations and groups and, 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 and corporate interest and everything else. They can, they can act and legislate based on, you know, based on their constituents. They can, they can, mm -hmm. they can, they can work with their conscience. They can simply say, you know what? I don't feel good about voting against climate change, but 
one of my biggest donors happens to be an oil company. So I guess I'm going right, to go along right. with what they say. Right. If you take that money out of the equation, they can vote yes. their conscience. Exactly. You know? And having said that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get out of here by telling you, go hug your loved ones. Let people know just how important it is to vote. If you enjoy democracy, if you enjoy people that are going to actually try to put things in place, we've just got to get more Democrats in office. I mean, that's just... There ain't none. Of, I ain't going to cat and mouse this shit about you need to just vote. No, fuck that. The obstructionist on mass shootings is a Republican Party. And the also the the unobstructionist on not allowing abortions because they want you to birth these babies into existence to become target practice is that same Republican Party. I'm Lamont yeah. Tyson. That's the living legend, Larry. Till that next sex is hell video next week. We'll see you.